Hello friends and family. I figured I'd share a wife story with you guys. So if you're a wife or a mother or I guess a female or a male, who knows, you've probably been to a grocery store before. I've been several times, you know, with my mom um, and my mom had her list all organized and good to go and knew everything that we needed and so now I'm the wife and I have to go to the grocery store and do all this stuff. When you move in with your husband who has been living by himself forever, um, he has nothing except for ramen noodles. Case in point. So we needed more than ramen noodles in our household. So I made a list, I googled, and I was like, what do houses need? What are some of the things that I should have? And I knew that I wanted my kitchen to look just like my mom's. So we had gotten these clear containers. Here's my sugar container, okay? Labeled. So we had sugar in the house, but we had no flour. And I said to myself, self, I don't really know what we use flour for, but I know my mom always had sugar and flour. So I was like, okay, I need flour. So I put it on my grocery list and off to the commissary I go. The commissary is the grocery store on military bases. So I go to the aisle where the flour is and there's like a bajillion kinds of flour. Did you know this? I did not know this. There's like bread flour, there's flour, flour, I don't know. There's just so many kinds of flour. So I just got the generic, basic flour that seemed like it would make whatever I needed it to make. Ooh. This is a 10 pound bag of all purpose flour. It didn't look 10 pounds to me and I clearly didn't read. It just said all purpose and I thought, hey, I have a lot of purposes so maybe you can help me. So. That is the reason that this episode is entitled My 10 Pound Bag of Flour, Episode 1. Because my mom has since challenged me to see if I can actually use 10 pounds of flour. <sighs> I thought to myself, self, what is something that people make with flour all the time? And the first thing that came to mind was chocolate chip cookies. So my first recipe for you guys is going to be this awesome recipe for chocolate chip cookies that I found. I don't even know if they're any good. But we're gonna find out. So let's go to my kitchen. Ooh, that was cool. Hi everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. So the cookies I'm making today are called the best chocolate chip cookies for reals. So they have to be pretty good because it says for reals. Here are the things we need. Three fourths of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. That is a stick and a half. Wife knowledge. Okay, three fourths of a cup light brown sugar, a fourth of a cup of sugar, one egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of flour, perfect, one package of instant vanilla, is that vanilla? Yep, yeah, vanilla pudding mix. Baking soda, salt, salt open. Is that bad luck? Do I have to throw salt? Left shoulder? Right hand, left shoulder. Oh my god, there's salt everywhere. I'm gonna blame that on the husband. And chocolate chips. I'm gonna need some bowls and a beater. Oh my goodness, I'm stepping in salt. So I'm gonna get my lovely blender hand mixer thing. This is not a blender. That Carol Pesci gave to me as a shower gift. So we're gonna pop this buddy out and we're gonna put in while it is unplugged. See mom, I'm being safe. Two hoobies. That's the sound of a successful kitchen. Dear husband, why would you put the cookie sheet on the bottom? Who knows? Are you kidding me? Alright, so step number one. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Step number two, cream together butter and sugars until smooth. Here's a question to all my mom friends out there. 
how I'm not a mom. Whoa, mom or wife. Here, uh, how do you get half a stick of butter and then keep the other half good? Normally, I cut down the middle, but then it's like I have this like butter butt hanging out, and I don't like that. Butter and sugars. So that would be the light brown sugar and the sugar. So you want to get out your mixing cups, and if you're like me and you have a Grandma Perry, you have several sets of mixing cups. Measuring cups. Perfect. You need three fourths of a cup light brown sugar, tightly packed. That means that you're going to take the sugar and you're going to pack it in. So, three fourths of a cup. They don't make a three fourths one. Perfect. So, you're just going to take your one fourth one and you're going to do it three times. Mathematics. Solving problems every day. When you don't have scissors, woo! Use your giant kitchen knife to cut open your bag. I'm just kidding. Don't do this if you have children or want to keep your fingers. One, two, three. And you also need one fourth cup of regular sugar. Alright, cream together butter and sugars until smooth. So, plug in. Woo! Get out the way. All right, so we're gonna cream till smooth. Mm. Smooth. Add in one egg. If you don't know how to crack an egg, I cannot help you. Voila. All right, add rest of ingredients one by one and mix well. Okay. All right. It's easier. So the first thing I'm going to add is a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And I bought the imitation stuff because the real stuff was wicked expensive. Sorry, I'm going to use my teeth, Mom. I know you paid for these, but it's just a little plastic. Look at that. We're good. Use your... Princess measures, thanks to Grandma Perry. Ooh. Two cups of flour. Perfect. I have just the thing. Ooh. Look at that. Woohoo! Two cups. Look at that. We're cutting away at these 10 pounds. And there's two cups. Perfect. It feels layer all ready. Mix that. This is the I think I did something wrong moment. Because my dough doesn't look doughy enough. This says two eggs. do I do? Maybe keep going and then see what it looks like at the end? Because it's only all dry ingredients left. One ounce. Oh great, this is only one ounce and recipe calls for 3.4 ounces. Perfect. It's called improvising. Make it work with what you got. Like, this might not be the right amount of stuff. I might add another egg, even though the recipe tells me don't add another egg. You do what you want to do. These are your cookies, and on my cookies, they are your cookies. An eighth of a teaspoon. Do they even make that? I make a fourth. So I'm going to do half of that. All right, so eyeball the salt. Looks about, looks about all right. All right. And the chocolate chips are last. It seems like it needs another egg. Because right now it kind of just looks like beach sand. So you know what? Say la vie. I'm adding another egg. Alright. 
much better. Now it looks like cookie dough. So now you're going to fold in your chocolate chips. And it says one to two cups, pretty much according to your chocolate needs. So my chocolate needs are pretty high right now because my husband's working overnight. So again, big kitchen knife. Careful of your fingers. Ooh. Wait, how much does this say? Approximately two cups. Oh, so I'm gonna put this whole bag and fold them in. So then from there, all you're really going to do is scoop them out, put them on a cookie sheet, and bake them for 10 to 12 minutes, um, or until they meet your cookie desires. Alright, I did three rows, ooh, three rows of four cookies, or four rows of three cookies, so I've got 12 in, and 10 to 12 minutes. So just an update, I left them in for 14 minutes, because at 10 and 12, they didn't look, ooh, done enough yet. Good. Thanks to Patty and Jim for my lovely oven mitts. Alright, so that's it for my first episode of my 10 pound bag of flour. Um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm really glad to you know, be able to stay in touch with you guys. I'm around, so feel free to FaceTime me. You can call me, text me, write me letters. I really appreciate everyone that stayed in touch with me. But for now, just sit back and enjoy your cookies. Mmm. See you next time.